We want to say thank you to our sponsors, Watchman Cigars, Operation Decisive Victory, Webmerized, and Red Hill Brewing. Without you guys, this episode would not be possible. Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast, where it's our take on life, liberty, and the pursuit of gravy. While you, the listener, are invited to come up on the front porch, grab a beverage, and set a spell. We've got a great show lined up for you, as always. But before we begin, let me introduce you to our starting lineup. Running the Facebook Live, the YouTube Live, the Twitch, and anything else that you can see on the web, it's our magic man. Hey, everybody. And behind the control deck, it's producer Brian. Hey, hey, hey. And of course, I'd be your illustrious host, Biggin. And how about you? Uh, producer Brian, where can our folks find us on the socials? We're on the Facebooks at facebook.com slash Southern Fried Philosophy. Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at SFP Radio. We're on YouTube at YouTube.com slash channel slash UCCVEM8FHQ2YKTUMGUMI5NPG. You can always email the show at SFPRadio at gmail.com. If you'd like to support the show, please visit patreon.com slash SFP radio. And we are always streaming on the iHeartRadio, Spotify, and TuneIn apps. There you go. Please, uh, again, we say this multiple times and i know that we've got more than 100 listeners so please go out to youtube click the subscribe button turn off your notifications and call it a day uh if you are staying at home and you want to do your own podcast hit up producer brian he can do all the wonderful magic that he does to make this show sound as best as it can i'm just going to say that uh shoot him an email at headlines at sfpradio.com if you'd like to be a show sponsor shoot me an email at sfpradio.com i had our first one this week and didn't quite pan out so well uh next week though here's here's what i want to take away our next week's guest guys um I'm really excited to have this person on. Uh, Gwen Traversy was supposed to be on. She had some stuff come up, she's, so we had to move her. But we were able to get this next guest, and his name is David Page. Now, you may not know David Page. You may be asking yourself, who in the world is David Page? Well, let me tell you this. He is the author of this book called Food Americana, which I've got the audio book. I'm going through it. It's fantastic. Mm. But you may also know him as the creator of this little TV show that we have maybe watched called Dine-In's Drive, Dine-In's Driver, dry, what's it called? What's it? What's it? <laughs> Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives. Yes. The Triple D. Triple D. Uh, yeah. Let me get that out of my mouth. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, but anyway, he created the show with Guy Fieri and uh, I'm really excited to have him on. We're going to pick his brain about all those type of things and food, especially Southern food. He knows way more about fried chicken than I think anybody should know about it. But uh, anyway, he's going to be on the show next week. David Page, be sure to tune in for that. We're really excited to have him on. Uh, We want to say shout out to our listener from Belgium. Mm. I I like your waffles. waffles. How about you? There you go. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to ask you like I ask you guys every week. I'd be darn. Magic Man, give us that weather. That weather. (laughs) Oh, man, it's hot. It feels like. It feels like the middle of the summer out there, at least here in North Carolina this week it does. Yo, what in the world? Who didn't their who did not do their quiet time this week? Because God is punishing us. I <laughs> guarantee you that's what's happening. Yeah, it kind of makes you glad, Jake. Well, I'm not gonna go there. Um <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's hot. But no, doing good, man. Uh we got the Memorial Day weekend coming up. Uh honor Absolutely. those who, who uh gave their lives, uh did the the uh supreme sacrifice uh for our freedoms. Um and you know, enjoy a, a nice long weekend, but also uh, honor those that uh, uh, gave their lives for for us to be free and, and uh, enjoy what we have here in the United States. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's incredibly hot. I, <clears throat> I, I told my dad, I think I'm going to take a nice little vacation to Antarctica just to get away from this heat. <laughs> because good grace. Uh, Producer Brian, how you be doing? I'll tell you what. Uh, oh, boy. About two hours ago. 
my biscuits were burning pretty good. Ooh. Ooh. So literally or figuratively? Maybe a little bit of both, potentially. Uh, so <laughs> how long have restaurants had to do the curbside pickup, like carry out thing now? I don't know, but I hope Five God, years. they don't stop. I hope they don't stop. Well, so uh, this after this evening, we had to get dinner and impromptu. We, it wasn't planned. We were going to make mm-hmm. something. And I, I did the yard. You know, wife was home late. Mm-hmm. So Zaxby's drive through. Well, actually, okay. Zaxby's app. <laughs> Curb carry out, you know, you punch uh-huh. it in, whatever. Back to the chicken sandwiches. Back to the, well, I didn't get a chicken sandwich for the record. Oh, but, uh-huh. um, I mean, I got chicken because really I right make there. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I get the Zaxby's app, put our whole, you know, everyone's in curbside. So I drive over and the Zaxby's by my house, maybe I don't think they're all this way, is the slowest place on earth. Yeah, they're, they can like, be. They can be. What, you know, and I, I partially blame Chick-fil-A for this, for setting expectations for <laughs> sure, drive through yeah. food. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of places that can do what they do. For some, no, I don't know why. Maybe no it's because it's the, they can't. What, they, they just don't. They can. They no. don't. That's, <laughs> That's yeah. right. Anyway, so the app says my food will be ready at like 6.05, which is like 10 minutes from, I'm still sitting on my couch, right? Like, okay. okay, it'll take that long to get in the truck, drive right. over there, and you know, pull in the parking spot. Right, get over there. There's no signs anywhere for like. Ooh. There's no like number one, number two, park here, <laughs> anything. So I get right. in the drive through line going. This is probably my best bet. Well, the drive through takes at least twenty minutes for me to just get to the box. And according mm. to the app, my food was ready at like six oh five. Right. Ooh, yeah. Okay, some of the the box, you know, and apparently they had maybe maybe they had a staff shortage or something on it because they're closing early. But okay, yeah. You know, I'm trying to tell them who I am, and they three times she's like, "Can't get my name," which is not that complicated, right? <laughs> no, not at all. Just say producer Brian. <laughs> yeah, That's not it's exactly. Hard. Order for producer Brian. <laughs> Once uh, I pulled around and she asked my name again, so I literally uh-huh. I've already spelled it on the box. So now I'm going to spell it again. Uh-huh. It, the food there it's not ready yet. Like, mm-hmm. like what do, I don't I don't understand. I know Nobody they're slow. Was it. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, I I was a little hangry anyway. You know, you ever get that angry? You know, no, sure. It just I don't know. I was uh I, I was thinking about like you know those cartoons like Yosemite Sam would have like his face would turn red and the steam <laughs> right. come out. That's where I was there <laughs> waiting on my Zaxby's. It was just I'm ready to like just not go back basically but Ooh. well this particular store has messed up our order like nine out of ten times my mm-hmm. daughter's food is wrong it's always her food it's not my food she, they don't or, like it's her. always her or the sauce uh-huh. is missing or there's no fries or no chicken or anyway it's, that's rough man that's my rant i see i seem to have noticed kind of a decline in the level of service at a lot of uh fast food restaurants absolutely it's, it seems like the Takes longer, uh, orders not coming out yeah, correct. And everyone's hiring for whatever, you and know, bad, there's, that's a thing, yeah. I think. So good help yeah. or any they're help saying, is hard to find. Yeah, they're saying that the to trying to, uh, trying to get hot people hired, uh, they're having a hard time finding people to, to hire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, it just seems like, you know, in, in general, um, and there's, there's exceptions, there's good exceptions, and there's worse exceptions. But in general, it just seems like, I don't know, just just isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and this particular yeah. restaurant is never like pre shutdowns. It's always slow. Yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, maybe I should give them a little more grace. But even even when they were things were up to par, they were still slower than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, how you be doing? Ooh, no good. Well, <clears throat> you had to wait what thirty forty minutes for your food. It felt like forever, but yeah, it felt like forever. Yeah, for his fast food. For for his fast food. Mm. Well, I, my company had a forced furlough where I had to take a week off uh, for COVID reasons. And, and so I was able to file for unemployment for one week. So that was back in the last part of June, June 22nd. Mm -hmm. Well, I filed for the unemployment, um, probably like 
too much. Like, and I forgot about it. It was just a week. No big deal. Like we were able to survive. We have, you know, our Dave Ramsey, six months of, you know, <clears throat> stuff. So we were fine. Uh, but and two months later, I was like, should I've gotten a check by now? <laughs> so I give them a call and they're like, Oh, well <clears throat> you're supposed to go in and register every week. Like what? Well, I, I didn't know that. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm like, Oh yeah, you're supposed to do that. Well, let me, let me work on it and I'll call you back tomorrow and we'll get this straightened out. Sure. Got it. Okay. Didn't call me back. <clears throat> well, and then, so I called again, forgot about it. Called back a couple of weeks later and I was like, Hey, you're supposed to fix this, blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah. We'll get it taken care of. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So then like a couple weeks after that, nothing happened. And I was like, all right, y'all. So then I, I call back and then we go round and round and they can't fix it. They, I went up to a quote unquote manager. They weren't able to fix it. They're like, well, you're going to have to file an appeal at this point. I'm like, well, how long is this going to take? Long story short, at this point, I'm 11 months right now. I'm 11 months from filing this unemployment. My appeal mm. finally got processed yesterday and I have won my case where I was out for a week. Oh. 11 months later. Y'all. You get one week of pay, right? I get one week of pay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the efficiency of our government. How many hours? Yeah. If you were, if you were billing those hours. Oh, yeah. Like, um, you probably spent more than a week's worth of time on that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I, if, if I use my billable hours, we're talking a crap ton of money that the, the state has. And then, you know, I could go back and say, I would have used this X amount of dollars to invest in GameStop or AMC, but I couldn't because mm. I didn't have it. So therefore, you owe me what I would have gotten from those stocks, but I'm not going to be that guy. Yeah, if you had played it the right way and actually made money and not lost anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, those of you remember who, who have listened to the show a while, I've, I've been playing the stock market, and my percentage, my ROI percentage was at 80%. Like, I was crushing it, um, and I was feeling really good about myself until, like, probably about two months ago, and then all heck broke loose. Now I'm at, like, 33%. So it's, it went down. It's starting to come back up. But uh, it's better than putting it in the bank. I will say that. <laughs> so anyway, there's that. I'm not doing too bad. I will say if you want any stock tips, um, JJ Buckner is a good person to follow mm. or just invest in lithium because everybody's going to EV. So, right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so also, producer Brian, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. You know what this is. All right. So uh, this past week, uh, you mentioned that you had a great breakfast meal yes, with with toast. And then you guys uh, will remember we had mom and pop's Vermont maple syrup oh, that on the, the show. Pick. Yeah, mm-hmm. that I was ready for a different <laughs> fight. Okay. All right. Well, that, that, that's coming up. <laughs> we had mom and pop's Vermont maple, world's, the, Vermont's best maple syrup. Uh, we've got some from them. Loved it. It's fantastic. Uh, but they also have the maple cream. And so producer Brian and I both ordered that. Yep. Well, you said that you made toast, then you put the maple cream on that. Yep. And then you put bacon on that. Yep. And you said it was phenomenal. Yep. Yep. And so my wife and I, we were figuring out what we're going to try to do for breakfast. And I was like, you know, producer Brian said to try this. So I got my brioche bread, oh. made it like uh, magic man makes it in the, in the oven you know, I call it grandma bread, but uh, it was it was that. Then put the thick cut bacon on it. Yep. With with the maple cream, and I sat here at my desk where I'm at now for work, and I had the first bite. And when I bit into that deliciousness, the the skies opened. A dove flew down and landed on my shoulder. And it said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. (laughs) (laughs) It was the most incredible thing I have ever put in my mouth. It it was sweet. It was savory. It was. And then Jessica put uh, an egg on mine, a fried egg on top of that. Y'all. 
Okay. I am telling you, it is phenomenal. Yeah. So, Mom and Pop's Vermont, world's best, or Vermont's best maple it's, syrup. Yeah, Mom and Pop's maple cream. world's best Vermont maple syrup. Oh, okay. That's, That's the full, okay. yeah. Uh, we'll put the link up on our show notes again. But <clears throat> that was uh, Magic Man. You're just going to have to come over one day, and we're going to have okay. to make this thing. Because it is... Oh, and you said it's even better with a biscuit. Oh, yeah, it's even better. So like, just going back a little bit, I, I don't that. have fancy bread like you do. I mean, I eat like a wheat sandwich bread around here. That's just what we eat. Oh, well, that know? explains your whole egg sandwich. Thing. And that's what, and that's just fine. I like wheat bread. That's what I've grew up on. That's what I, that's what I eat, you know, and not fancy stuff, but, uh, I've made mine just, and it was, I really enjoyed it. But then mm-hmm. like maybe last weekend or two weeks ago, I put that maple cream on a biscuit with some bacon. Mm. And uh, I believe I said that you've only been to the first level of heaven at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, it, yeah. seriously, I, I don't, I don't bull junk about, uh, about food. That was incredible. It was good. No. In fact, it was so good. Jess said, well, what are you having for dinner? And I'm like, I think I've got it right here. I'm going to do this again. <laughs> Round D for D. D. That's yep. right. I've D also been D. putting That's it right. on banana muffins this week, so Ooh. which is nice. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Bless the maple cream. All right. So speaking of, let's go to our Southern phrase of the week called hill of beans. You guys have heard that saying before. Uh, mm-hmm. In the South, a hill of beans is its own measurement. A hill of beans isn't worth very much, whether you were talking about volume or value, which means whatever you're talking about isn't worth less or is worth less than very little. So just, you know, that's just worth a hill of beans, which means it ain't worth nothing. Mm-hmm. It ain't worth nothing. <clears throat> um, speaking of things that ain't worth nothing, let me uh, tell you about, do you guys remember the story? about the the Ohio mm-hmm. vaccination process. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where if uh if you did not receive a covid shot and then you decided you were going to get a covid shot, you were entered into a lottery to win 1 million dollars. Yes. And so we we wondered like how good that really is going to going to work. So um <clears throat> it turns out that when they did the numbers uh they increased for a for eighteen and nineteen year old age group forty six percent vaccination rate, <laughs> <laughs> and then from twenty to forty nine year old group, it went up fifty five percent for them to win to hit the lotto. The first uh, the first Vaximillion lottery winner. <laughs> that's what they're calling it, Vaximillion. <laughs> which, by the way. Not bad. Well done. Well done. Well, well done. done. Well, actually, he anna- has already been announced 30 minutes ago. It was 729. Oh. So the first Vaximillion lottery winner will be announced today. Can we get them on the show? <laughs> we should. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? 46% of 18 to 19 year olds and 55% of adults. That's. I mean, what was the numbers before? I mean, that's so. Is that that much was the increase by the half. increase by? Yeah, it sounds impressive. You know, statistically, I suppose. I don't know what the original number was, so that kind of right. yeah. makes me skeptical. But that's that shows you. You know, especially I, I can see it with eighteen to nineteen year olds. Because you know, the Powerball gets up to oh. you know triple digits, and everyone gets starts to goes buys more tickets. Decreasing odds and all that mess, but right. <laughs> also from sixteen to seventeen uh, year old age group went up ninety four percent. And oh. and just to be clear, like the sixteen through like eighteen year old groups, there's a four uh, scholarships, full scholarships to right. Ohio State uh, universities. So ninety four percent for that. So I guess that because in some places the shots weren't approved yet for that age group, so. Yeah, I think in the I, I guess they are so, now, but yeah, that would make sense for the went from one to two percent, right? Yeah, yeah, but for the older people, it kind of makes you wonder if there's a lot of people sitting on the fence about getting the vaccination, and they just need a little sure. nudge, right? This was a nudge to get them to go do it. So, so, is this something you think that everybody should do? Like, does that do you think that the one million dollars is enough encouragement for folks to go get it? The argument could be, well, why don't they split that up? 
and do like fifty thousand dollars per county or something like that. Do it by a, a yeah. county basis. Think about what your population was. So they had five, they had five. They would have five winners, right? Right. Five so five out of that. I mean, there's not how I many people live in Ohio. That's a real question, I guess. I I mean, there's not a lot. But if I mean, you say, you know, you think about like the first, you know, when there's a when you used to go to like Hornets games, the first hundred guests got a towel. Right. You know, the first like five hundred people to get sign up for vaccination get a hundred dollars and they walk in the door. Right. Like, <laughs> like think about that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Then everyone's been signed up, and then you don't know what number you are, so you get your shot anyway. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, evidently, the numbers work. I mean, well done, I guess, if that's your goal. Yeah. Is that a waste of $1 million or $5 million plus whatever you're going to pay for those universities? Maybe. So. Mm, anyway, no, yes, it was just a follow up on uh, on that story that we had. Mm. Uh, another follow up is a bone to pick with producer Brian yet again. Oh, here we go. All right. Here's here's the other one. So again, from a follow up of the grilled cheese debate that we had two weeks ago, um, producer Brian sent a picture of his egg sandwich, which we posted on Facebook. So if you want to go to Facebook against um, my consent to be to be uh, yeah, but, well. <laughs> Uh, Facebook.com <laughs> forward slash SFP radio. You can look at there. At yeah. there. Uh, his is at the bottom and mine's at the top. So he, he posted a picture mm-hmm. or sent me a picture, said, mm, look at this fantastic egg just, breakfast. I just made the same thing twice in a row and sent a picture. As there I do. And so I was, I was, I was taking small batch to school and I looked at that and, he, and I was like, uh oh, now we're going to have a fight because mm. I'm going to make a much better sandwich than he is. And producer Brian, tell us how you made your sandwich. Well, okay. Let's basically, and I think this is where we kind of got off last time. I will, my goal with this sandwich is to make a grilled cheese with egg, not to make an egg sandwich. So I'm making it the same way that I would make a grilled cheese sandwich, only I'm adding egg to it. Because it's breakfast. Eggs make it breakfast, right? I'm going to argue that that's an egg sandwich with cheese, not a but grilled cheese I with egg. But if I was just going to make an egg sandwich, I wouldn't use the same methodology. I'd probably be more closer to what you did and just like okay, toast something or heat up the bread or do something to make the bread <laughs> crunchy and then make this egg. Sometimes I see it on plain bread, but egg sandwich... I don't know. This was cheesy. Like, it's extra cheesy. The point of it is it's cheesy, and the eggs is just a uh, – it's breakfast grilled cheese is the way I look at it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so, how did you make it? Well, this one, so you start with, you know, butter in the pan, you crack an egg, you let it cook for mm-hmm. just a second, and then I take my bread and I put it on top of the egg in the pan, use the spatula and kind of make it all the same shape. Then I throw the extra butter in, flip it over so the – Bread, the other side of the bread starts to toast. Then I add cheese and melt it. But basically, I'm doing a three flip grilled cheese sandwich. It just happens to have a fried egg in the middle. It's not a runny egg, it's just a fried egg. So the question then is how does your cheese, if you put the cheese on it and flip it, how does your cheese not stick to the pan? I didn't flip the cheese. The cheese was on top of the egg. So after I flipped it up, so it starts egg on the okay. bottom, bread goes oh, down. Oh, put the bread. Then I flip it over flip it. so the bread's okay. on the bottom of the pan. Cheese okay. goes on the egg. Then the new bread comes in. Okay. And that gets flipped over and toasts the other side. Okay. And you get a fried All egg. Right. And cheese, fried. There's a grilled cheese with a fried egg, basically. That's, that's what I'm, if I was writing a menu, that's what it would be called. Okay. <laughs> so I've evidently made an egg sandwich. You made an egg sandwich uh, with, with uh, crunchy toast, it looks like. Yeah. So I got, again, the brioche, which we had it. So I That's was good. Hey. So got the brioche, you know, did it grandma style, put the butter on it, put it in the oven on the top and on the broiler, got it nice and crunchy, uh, did an egg, you know, fried an egg, and then I put the bacon on it, you know, um, then got the toast out, put you know, one side up, put the egg in, yeah. put the cheese on it, put the other one in, put mm-hmm. that in the oven for a second, get it all melty, bada bing, bada boom. So the whole deal was, then we posted on Facebook to see which sandwich looked the best. Yep. Mine was a runny egg, though. What was the number? So, I didn't ever saw the final votes on this. So here, yeah, so I've got the final notes. <clears throat> so Brian Little said bottom. Mm, which was me, right? Which was you, yep. yes. Uh, Daniel Charlton said bottom. Mm-hmm. Right now we're two to nothing. 
That's uh, the, when I commented earlier. That's the only ones I had seen. Okay. <laughs> I like, I like so, found the button to show me the rest of it. Went, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Short, who I trust, who has a catering business, voted top. Mm-hmm. Uh, K. Thomas said bottom. So right now, three to one. We can just stop. That's good. Jim uh, Purvis said if he going, he's going to a sit down restaurant, oh. which is top. If he's going to drive, it's for the bottom. Mm, that's a good point. So I'll give him the point on that one. Nobody gets points. We that's cool. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. That's not an answer. Uh, Kimberlini said top. Ashley Gutierrez said bottom. Oh. Rodney said top. And Sarah Heacock said top. Oh, no. So now <laughs> we are at a four to four tie. Uh, and then so I asked Magic Man. And Magic Man, what's what's you're the tiebreaker? So you saw the pictures, you know what we're having, you know, and, and you've already mentioned before. Which yeah. one did you pick? Put me on the spot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, that's what I do. I believe my response was, uh, if you remember from that movie, Oh Brother, Where Out Thou, when they were <laughs> voting on who was going to be the leader of this outfit. And uh, Pete says, I vote for yours truly. And Everett says, I vote for yours truly. And Delmar says, I'm with you guys. <laughs> I'm with you guys. <laughs> now, um, it, it was a very, very tough decision because uh, they both look excellent. Uh, the only thing or that kind of excellent, ex- and that was not intended either. So, hey, <laughs> um, it, my vote went for JT only because he had bacon yes. on his sandwich, yeah. and I didn't see anything like that on Brian's. Yeah, there was actually the I didn't, it was not seen in the picture, but it did have ham on it. It just happened that morning. It happened to have ham. So there's some ham in there, which may have changed. Okay. Now it's a hot ham and cheese <laughs> with egg. Yeah. grilled cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you just blew your grilled cheese theory out of water. But for yeah. everybody listening, these two guys, they're, they're they know how to do make some good food. So you know, there we go. It's a tough decision. Yeah. Yep. Uh, all right. So we'll say that I won that one and uh, chalk that one up. Fair enough. Next. It's yeah. It's early. In. It's early in the summer, so I'm sure we'll have some more competitions. Yeah, I'll just start. I'll start sending you pictures of everything I make, and then you make it and see oh, how it crap. goes. Yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> I can't because I, I don't have the grill, so I can't. I can't uh, do yeah. all that stuff. I made chicken shawarma on Sunday. I, put, I don't know if I posted that or not. What is that? You did post it, but what is that? It's like a uh, Middle Eastern. Basically, you know, have you ever been to like a? Nope. Like uh, there's like Le Kebab is in the university mm-hmm. area. You ever had a euro? Yeah. You no, know, it's a big piece of meat on a turner. Okay. Uh, shawarma is very similar. Usually it's lamb or chicken, and it's, you know, got Middle Eastern spices on it. And they just, okay. it, it turns on the same type of like infrared burner. Hmm. So um, basically, usually it's with chicken, it's just a bunch of chicken stacked up. Mm-hmm. And it, okay, it compresses and slowly cooks, and they'll slice it off, and it keeps cooking. And you keep slicing and cooking and that kind of thing. Well, I did that in my smoker because in my pit barrel, huh. I can hang. Stuff. So I had some hooks okay. or some like long uh, skewers, and I put. I was in a hurry, or I would have done the longer stacks. But basically, I did like four one-pound stacks of chicken. Okay. Marinated and cooked them for a little over an hour. Mm. It's good. Mm. Just like that. Put it on a pita if you have like cucumber sauce or something. Oh yeah. Come on. Put it on anything. It's tzatziki. It's fantastic. All right. Yeah. Uh, if you guys remember, we do a bit called "Speak Your Peace," so we're going to go to that now, and that's. A bit, well, not a bit, but it's Mountain a column f- from the Mountain Eagle newspaper yeah. in Letcher County in Kentucky. And we're not making fun. I want to be very clear. We're not making fun of these folks. These are my people. I'm from Kentucky, so I call Kentucky home. So these are these are my folks. So I'm not making fun. I'm just pointing out that uh, this column, there's this newspaper, they have a, a an old um, answering machine, and people will call in and speak their piece p i e c e and they'll just say whatever they want and then this newspaper will then print out their rants and then we have this glorious radio gold so uh <laughs> from from the speaker piece to my noisy neighbor next door the reason why i moved my chickens out from the bottom and around my house is because my no good brother-in-law and sister who you claim talks to you over the computer Claim you are going to buy my uncle a double wide and put that at the bottom. You claim that when you do that, you'll get the land where his house is on now. But you have another think 
coming. You have nothing. You might think that you are God's greatest creature, but you own nothing. Oh, Ooh. So someone else's biscuits are burning. Oh, big time. No Man, those things are Cajun blackened. <laughs> you know, this person's old because they refer to you claim to talk to you over the computer. I don't care what my dad does, but everything is on the computer. It's not on the internet. It's not on Google. It's, I got, I found it on the computer. So yeah, I it was just sitting there. Yeah, they'd have to search for it, right? <laughs> it's just on the computer. Oh, so, oh, man, I love these. Have you seen, start, this is a tangent a little bit. Have you seen there's yeah. a, an account where, like, some old guy, they told him Twitter was a search engine? So he just like types what he wants to search for into Twitter and hit submit. No. <laughs> I need to find it. That's it's, it's hilarious. Oh, that's good. By the way, I pulled my back out this week, so it, it, it hurts to laugh really bad. So I was like, "Oh, oh sorry, I got a twinge in my back when I do that." Uh, yeah, so go ahead and find that, and I'll keep going. <clears throat> uh, to a certain woman, to sorry, to a certain woman, you. Uh, do you not feel guilty for being with one guy and making him believe that that you, that the young ones you have are supposed to be his? I know it's not his, and I know you know it's not his, and I can tell you who the daddy really is. He worked works in Whitesburg, and he wear glasses too. As soon as I saw that young man, I knew the daddy of that child. Mm. Bring on Boris Povich. <laughs> You are the father. Ooh, I mean, people are all up in each other's business. Uh, all right. I don't understand why they don't bring sw- the swap box back on air in Whitesburg. People really need it. They are put on programs that don't amount to a hill of beans. But when it comes to something that people need, they won't do it. Do you guys mm. know what the swap shop is? <sighs> yeah. All right. So yeah, it was a radio program. Mm-hmm. Uh, back, I, I remember hearing oh, it back it uh, 20 years ago. Well, the one I heard was called Swap and Shop. And okay. uh, basically, it was a guy on there, Swap and Shop, what you got? And, uh, <laughs> I love it. it. Was, and it was, yeah. And, and basically, they would, <laughs> people go on the radio and, to sell their stuff. And uh, they would describe what they had. So it was, it was almost like a, a radio version of the classifieds. Yeah. The, the, like the Craigslist of the radio. Yeah. In fact, here's what we should do. We should do a swap shop on the show. So, so either tweet or uh, email at SFP Radio, uh, Instagram, and send us like a picture or whatever uh, you want to sell, and we'll have a swap shop segment that we'll put on there. Oh man! So, <laughs> and now, so what happens is they'll put that information out. You'll then contact us, and then we'll give your information to them. And then they'll contact you, and then you guys will figure out the shipping and stuff. We have we don't have any of that stuff to do. Oh, no. Okay, oh. I found that Twitter account. <laughs> I didn't hear the last couple of things you guys were talking about because I found the Twitter account. Okay, all right. Uh, well, we'll finish this, and then we'll get yeah, the Yeah, well, account. I've got it ready to go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. To a certain lady, this is Foxhound. Me and you used to get out just a little bit over in the Knott County area. Just wanted you to know that if you wanted to get out again, we might even stir up a fire that we had years ago. So this is Foxhound, and I'm going to call you Gray Wolf. Please respond, and we'll see where this goes. <laughs> I'm, I'm tempted to call and say that I'm Gray Wolf. This is Gray Wolf. <laughs> and we're going to meet at Knox area, in Knox County area, where we used to meet up. Should I do that? You know, that would be kind of funny. That would be great. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> all right, here's a mean one. To the ladies who work in Winston Mead's office in Whitesburg, you are the rudest and most ungrateful people. You don't want to help anybody, nor do you want to do anything for anybody. That's awful. Mm. I kind of want to know what the story is behind that. Right. Yeah. Here's yeah. a nice one, though. I think all the ladies who work at BP deserve tips. Just like all the other workers. Come on, people. Let's t- <laughs> let's step up and give them a dollar. Thank you. Right. I don't know how many people are going to that, that BP, but a dollar 
I ain't going to go too far. Hmm. Uh, all right. Last but not least, um, from the Mountain Eagle, to the person who is opening up my mail, could you please not seal it back so tightly? <laughs> 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 so that oh, is man. your this week's uh speak your piece from the mountain eagle all right oh, producer man. brian we, what you we need like a sound bite for that like a something to <laughs> like cue that you know like an eagle screeching uh, or something yeah like. that'd be great I like it. All right, that's yeah. pretty good what you just did there Bacon. yeah there we go we'll just record that yeah uh, just use that <laughs> it happen. Yep. Uh, so apparently this is this twitter thing is really old i didn't realize how old it was uh, so this is not new for anybody. <laughs> but the story is uh, like 10 years ago, uh, someone told his 81 year old father that Twitter was a search engine. Okay. Okay. So there Which are is genius, by the way, well done, sir. Whoever that was. Uh, there are 243 <laughs> tweets on this account right now. Wow. And the last tweet was, was two years ago. So okay. all right. Uh, so somebody but, uh, let him in on that. Norman, I don't know uh, his status anymore, but first thing, this is the first tweet ever. Ready? Yep. Weather. W, like weather, like the like match man weather. Yeah. Uh, then, he, then, you know, apparently that didn't work. So weather Indianapolis today. Right. Um, then it gets interesting really quick. Oh, no, okay. Oh, no. Oh, this no. is uh, like four or five in. Facebook on Shirley Tarnow Laporte High School class of nineteen forty eight. He's looking up old Great he's, Wolf. Mm-hmm. He's looking up Great Wolf. <laughs> yeah, then uh, we got Google Rash on ankle. <laughs> then he tweets tornado twice. Uh let's see here we go. Princess, this might be uh, this. I think this is PG thirteen or PG. Princess swimsuit breasts. Okay. And after that, this is the same day. This is the same day. Erase or forget a memory. He's trying to find Great Wolf again. Oh, no. And then we see uh, soft food and soft snacks, soft nuts. Uh, <laughs> that's what's for you. Osama yeah. dead <laughs> photo. I guess is the real one. Bin Laden. Oh goodness! Soft oh. boiled grapes. <laughs> can I, can, and then can uh, I ask- he tries to spell Lipitor three times and gets it wrong. <laughs> Uh, see here we go. Oh, here we go. Back in this oh, is, I, I oh, no. is Shirley Tarnow a widow? <laughs> Great Wolf. Wow. Right? Is that you? <laughs> uh, hold on. Um, John Stewart Jew. Whatever. I, <laughs> oh, <clears throat> Diane Sawyer swimsuit pictures. Uh, remote control <laughs> leash yellow. I mean, out of context, these are great, right? Um, National Geographic dinosaur truth. Here, here's my question, though. He's never. He's not getting results. I guess not. So why does he keep, keep two hundred and forty three <laughs> times? He's like, forget Ooh. it. Uh, it takes a dark turn. Oh no! Oh, Shirley no. Tarnow obituary. <laughs> There's a couple of those looking for her new name. Uh, Good night. Cracker Barrel Hours on Eagle Drive. Eagle View Drive. <laughs> of course. Howie Mandel photos with hair. <laughs> Less salty ham. <laughs> Buy a left shoe only. <laughs> <laughs> Um, does Jay Leno live on his set? Oh, goodness. Oh, Famous God. whales. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I think we got a show title. <laughs> Which one? Famous whales? Famous you got it. Whales. Yep. 
<laughs> is it that or Diane Sawyer in a swimsuit? Um, oh. it's, uh, oh. Odds on three thirteen nineteen twenty four thirty four Powerball. <laughs> Does aftershave expire? I mean, <laughs> I'm going to keep moving through here. Uh, there's, uh, this oh. is like gold. And he was probably contacting his kids saying, this Twitter search engine doesn't work. <laughs> Here, here's one. Why rap? <laughs> Bifocal swimming goggles. How to mail a pair. Nighttime trampoline illegal, question mark. Some kids in his neighborhood, they're jumping at night. He's like, this has got to be illegal. I know it is. Let me Google that. Is the weatherman considered that. an actor? <laughs> Are there, okay. Are there aunts in China, like your relative, you know, like your okay. mother's sister? <laughs> okay. What? Uh, <laughs> scissors to cut cheese with. <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah sorry i can hey. just sausage now i can cut <laughs> i can cut i can cut cheese without scissors yeah, i know yeah. i knew that was coming i, uh, I, I can, had no doubt he's a knife coming. john uh, glenn's phone number please <laughs> now it's being nice for the love of god twitter Return alternate something. uses for the moon okay <laughs> <laughs> What's the Twitter account? So if anybody it's wants called to go back. Old Man Search. Okay. All right. It doesn't, the last one was two years ago. Ooh, what was uh, the last one? Has anyone one? ever been named Onion? Um, <laughs> canister of Olympic pool water for gift. <laughs> Why can't I tickle myself? <sighs> Hooten's teeth are made of what? And the last one is Bazinga for Trump. That's, <laughs> that's it. Oh, God. Whew. Yo, I'm going to have to take some extra Advil for that one. <laughs> Good. <night. Sorry. laughs> How's your back? <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. I did see somebody tweet, uh, uh, Phil, Milkos- Phil Mickelson can win uh, the PGA at 50, but I have to take ibuprofen by helping somebody install a fan at 37. Yeah. That was good. Oh, well done, sir. That that was that the highlight was, of my night right there. Yeah. Well, let's just pack it up and call it a day. <laughs> Ooh, that was gold. Uh, all right, uh, Magic Man, you've got a story that you wanted to bring bring up on the show. Yeah, so uh, there's several articles about this out there. The one that we're looking at is from Best Life Online. Uh, it says, if somehow you've missed the news and haven't seen it with your own eyes, trillions of cicadas have begun emerging from the ground for the first time in 17 years. The cicadas that only come around once every couple of decades are called Brood X, and they may be drawing out like some other unwelcome visitors. Yes, it's not only the bugs you need to be on the lookout for. Experts say you also need to see, mm-hmm. or you might also be able to see, an unusual number of copperhead snakes nope. as they come looking for a nutrient packed cicadas to munch on. Mm-mm. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of scary. Uh, along with the the swarm of bugs, where we <laughs> may have some s- some stuff going on here, kind of like uh, uh, Noah's Ark. Not Do Noah's they come Ark. out around here? <laughs> well, I feel you, like- yeah, they do. I would have remembered that, right? It it's Eastern U.S. Yeah, because you you would have thought about it. yeah. I, uh, so I feel like so. Uh, yeah, the last time they came out was what 2004. That was 17 years ago. So, um, probably you know any place that has trees and you know a large amount of trees and stuff. Yeah. That's probably where you need to, any place that which, has trees. Yeah, that well, that's down, where they yeah. they bury themselves. In yeah, well, they live trees. off the tree roots underground. Yeah. So. Did not know that. Yeah, I did yeah. a little. I, I was reading up on. I was so this. I saw we were going to talk about this, and I actually had a, a potential wacky news story. Um, it says Georgia County asked residents to stop calling nine one one about cicadas, <laughs> oh, and it's mostly because of the sound they make. Oh, okay, yeah, it's terrible. Pretty loud, right? And it can be it's, like up to one hundred twenty decibels. Like it's loud. 
Ooh. Uh, oh, some people say it sounds like a like a UFO hovering going. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. It can totally yeah. sound like that. I tried to find a good like YouTube clip of it, but nothing really mm. did it justice. I feel like hmm. uh, I did yeah. find some interesting articles about it, uh, but I feel like I'd remember like a plague of locusts or cicadas. You know, like. Well, I do remember one. Uh, back in 1996. And it was like that. It was freaky too. These cicadas had come out and they have these big, they had like red or yellow eyes. And they were large compared to their yeah. bodies. Yeah. These are the red and, eye ones. Yeah. And they would just, uh, I remember they would just fly all over you. It was kind of scary, kind of creepy. And, <laughs> and they had that noise. They'd be up, up there rubbing their legs or whatever it is they do to make that noise uh, in the trees. And it's just this humming, kind of humming noise. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. And, in that article, though, it said that not only do we have to worry about the copperheads, but it, the copperheads, they've got a full belly now yeah. with the cicadas. And so mm-hmm. there's much more time for hello time mm-hmm. with, with other snakes. So yeah. now we got to worry about not even this year, but next year there's going to be lots of little uh, Satan's little hand puppets running around. Well, yeah, the I think the fall is when snakes oh, yeah, have fall, babies. Yeah. So like, you'll have more... Big and not well, not biggins, but more big right. copperheads, <laughs> yeah. full grown. And next yeah. next spring coming out so, probably. Uh, <laughs> in other articles I've read, they said that the the snakes generally come out at night, and not usually during the day a whole lot. So, but anyways, big, the point is is watch where you step, because uh, you, you may, especially <sighs> if you're in the woods, uh, you may yeah. find something unpleasant. I'm petrified there. now. A small batch because she loves. She loves running around in the backyard, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm like on patrol trying to find anything that's moving. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the store and get the snake away stuff. I'm gonna put line the entire perimeter with golf balls. You just need like Maybe a big, uh, big old black snake to deal with it. Just need one of those Ooh. in the backyard, and they'll they'll take God. care of the rest of it. Look, I'm not dealing with any no shoulders. I you hate gotta, them. You don't gotta deal with them. They'll they'll get keep. They'll eat the copperheads. I'm just going to buy here's I'm going to buy a lot of cats and put them in the back. And um, then I'm going to buy, uh, you know, after they eat all the, the snakes, then I'm going to buy a bunch of eagles to take care of the cats. Uh, and then, you know, there we go. Then I'll fight one off and see if I can do it barehanded. So I believe so I was looking at an Instagram account. Uh, I believe he was on the show, the culinary lion at some uh-huh, point. Yeah. Was he uh, yeah. before my time? I think uh, so. He has an Instagram video of he's uh, making looks like tempura battered cicadas. No, thank you. I didn't see him eat any of them in this video, but mm-hmm. he went through the out. process. Apparently, you take the wings off first. They made like a tempura, like a spicy sauce. You dip them in, and nope. But, I thought that know. was fish. He didn't like the, mahi, the mahi. one he posted like. Two hours ago or something? Oh, no, I didn't. <clears throat> oh, we, well, uh, ba- look, we'll get him back on the show. We'll have him talk about it. It's like that. a red-eyed <laughs> tater tots is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to have him on the show. We'll talk about it. No spanky. So I, I've been, because he does a lot of keto stuff, so I've, been, I've started <laughs> following him. And yeah. Some really cool great. looking stuff. And yeah. He lost me. I mean, I'll, I'm pretty yeah. adventurous on the foodscape. Mm-hmm. Kind of a bug, man. That's, no. That's no. not on purpose. That's why God made bacon. We don't have to eat the right. I mean, how how are they with maple cream? Oh, you know, that's a little yeah, bit salty. To... <laughs> actually, I'll let you have it. <laughs> are they more like, I, I don't know, I have questions. Look, I feel like I could go out to the front yard because there's one going out right now. They have gooey uh, middle. Let's get uh, the dog poop that somebody did not pick up, <laughs> put the maple cream on that, and then uh, and let her eat. <laughs> I could probably do that. Oh, well. I'll let you have that, too. Appreciate that. Thank you for not picking that up right there. Talking to you. Shirt. Uh, all right. So so the Kannapolis Summer Concerts have announced their lineup uh, here close to Concord and Kannapolis. Just hop, skip it, and jump away. Uh, here's the lineup for the Summer Concert Series. We've got the Plain White Tees. Oh. Uncle Cracker and Jody Messina. And I got to thinking, I think at this point in my life, I'm just too old to go to concerts. I I didn't always like concerts anyway, but now I'm just like, I'm too, 
I'm too old. I don't want to drag. An excuse not to go. That's what. That's yeah, that's awesome. probably it. I'm not. I'm, I don't want to drag my chair out there. I don't want to sit on the ground. I don't want to be around all those people. I've become a curmudgeon. Like I don't want to go to these concerts, especially any of these people. I don't know who they are. Would you guys go to any of those concerts? As long I as it wasn't too crowded. Tees. Sorry, what'd you say? What'd you say? Uh, oh, tees? I said no. No, I was going to say, as long as it isn't too crowded, I would go. Yeah. Preach, Brian. Uh, Plain White Tees is pretty good. I'd, I'd go see them, probably. What was their one? What is their song? I don't it's, even know. Uh, one, either. two, three, four. Really? That's what it's called, that's, yeah. That's their hit? How's that go? Um, well, they do some counting in it. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, that was one of the songs uh, that was played before my wedding. Really? Yeah. Mm. Huh. Acoustic. Oh, I wish we could say it. was really cool, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The only one that, like, I don't feel like I would hang out with the Uncle Cracker crowd. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, <laughs> go ahead. these group like Canapolis, you know, the, right. these, some of these names were really big 20 years ago, right? Right. Or 15 years ago, even. Right. And like, you're still making music, but they're not mainstream, right? No. Like, yeah. I went to the, uh, it was that barbecue and beer fest over in Huntersville. Okay. It's one we're going to probably do in uh, September with uh, oh, okay. Lee. The, um, they moved. They've moved venues, but okay. I went to the first one, and it was a bunch of like '90s grunge bands. Huh. Which for me was great because that was the, my music. That was your thing. Yeah. yeah, but these guys are all playing in a field in Huntersville, right? <laughs> right. You know, 20 years ago, they were playing in, like, London, like, Wembley Stadium or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not quite right. that big, but... And now they're in Huntersville. They were playing at the arena downtown, not a field on a farm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, which surprised me, because the other... Uh, a while ago, before COVID, I wanted to go see Seinfeld. And I was like, that would be a great show to go see. Yes. And I looked at where he was playing, and they're like, all these... Native American resorts. And I'm like, what are you doing in Des Moines, Iowa in like the, this tiny theater or like this, you know, Indian casino. Like, I was like, bro, you've fallen so far from great. Uh, he likes to there. go into smaller venues, I think, and, and do he, that sort of I thing. Yes. But golly, but those he, tickets were like 125 yeah, bucks. He a likes pop. the atmosphere in those small clubs. Reminds him of like New York when he was hmm. coming up, I think. Wow. I've heard him talk about that. What concert would you guys, like, top of your list? What would you, who would you go see if you had to go see a concert? Oh, I love, well, I love music and concerts anyway, so. Okay. Uh, bucket list concert for me would be U2. Mm, okay. Honestly. And they're getting old, so that's going to, I'm going <laughs> to catch them on at the, at, at the, <laughs> the Huntersville at the Theater. Huntersville, or uh, Huntersville. On the yeah. field, yeah. <laughs> Magic Man, what about you? Yeah. Um, I don't have like a particular band that I would have to absolutely see, but you know, enjoy eighties music, probably some country music, something like that. That would be fun. Yeah. Country music in a field in Huntersville. That would be fun. There you go. Yeah. I'll give you uh, that. Have some beer and, uh, have a good old time there. Hey, we've got a new, um, commenter, uh, a oh. new person on our, oh, on our uh, chat here. Cicadas. Come on. Yeah. Zombie cicadas. Uh, they are still losing. Let's see. Yeah, I've heard, Have about, heard that. about zombie bic- cicadas. They are losing body parts like legs and abdomen because of a fungus and still move around. Or did they get the COVID shot? <laughs> and and then now they're turning into zombies. <laughs> yeah. And that new uh, new commenter, his name is James Ray. Oh, Sus- I bet there's some relation there. Mm, Might be. Suspicious. Might be. How about you? I, heard <laughs> I, I did see an article about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've heard about too. That's, no. that's uh, weird. I but there's would, lots of funguses. There's that's a real thing with more than one type of ant. Like a fungus that takes over like ants and like it, it gets in their brain and takes mm-hmm. over and makes them do like yeah. weird stuff. There's a lot of that in like South Africa and South or South America, I think. Uh, we'll talk about South, South America here in a little bit or South Africa. <laughs> uh for me, I think I would uh go to like I would drop everything and go to like a Will Smith concert just because oh, it's Will Smith. Is. Or like I saw Fresh Horses, Garth Brooks' Fresh Horses, and that that show was phenomenal. So I'd probably go back to that. And so there's that. All right. So 
Here comes our hot topics. I guess brought to you by ODV. I don't know who's sponsoring anything Who anymore. Sponsors that. Webmarais could sponsor that. Oh, right? all right. Webmarais will sponsor that. Webmarais? Okay. There you go. This hey. morning. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So here's the deal. <clears throat> so a, and, and just to preface by this, I, I ran it through my wife and made sure that we were not having the, the creepy, uh, pervy factor uh, on this one. I wanted to make sure that, you know, four older gentlemen commenting on this is okay. I think that there's some really good points that we could bring up and I wanted to know your thoughts about it. Um, but, oh boy, what happened? You said four older gentlemen and oh, I don't know, Brian and I are counting three. Three, sorry, <laughs> three. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a high school in, in St. Augustine, Florida. Uh, that's kind of where I was. I grew up a little bit <clears throat> in Mandarin. So Is that on the panhandle? Pretty- yeah, you know what St. Augustine is, okay. right? Yeah, I do now. By Jacksonville, just south of Don't Jacksonville. Depend. Okay. Uh, and and Bartram Trail High School uh, is in an embroiled debate over its handling of the district's dress code. So evidently, what had happened was they were uh, taking yearbook photos. Uh, and <clears throat> what had happened was <laughs> that... Uh, some of the girls weren't in proper quote unquote, they say dress code. And so they photoshopped some of the uh, girls that were evidently inappropriate and covered them up with some of their existing clothing. And, and we'll put the, the link in our show notes. They did a really bad job on photoshopping. So it looked obvious that they were covering stuff up. And, and to be completely honest, None of these girls were like horribly done. Like I would easily let small batch run around in what they were wearing. They weren't bad. They weren't distasteful. It wasn't inappropriate by any means. But then the school and the yearbook company had decided to not ask the girls and or have them do a, a makeup picture day, but then photoshopped their bodies. And now some of the girls are getting a lot of uh, feedback, getting made fun of. Because they did such a horrible job, it looks like weird. Um, And so they, you know, the girls have felt bad. They felt body shamed. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just looks bad on the girls and it looks bad on the yearbook company. And, you know, you take a step back and think about the body shaming that we've done in the past. um, And like, we shouldn't be doing it in the, in the future. Does photo shopping uh, a yearbook photo, does that count as body shaming? So <clears throat> I hope I did justice to the article. Basically, there were 80 photos that were edited. They were not asked to do a makeup day. They just took it upon themselves to Photoshop and cover it up. And they, again, did a really bad job and just um, made these girls feel bad. One of them uh, said that she even had to go into therapy because she was getting made fun of um, because of it. <clears throat> so... <sighs> It, it's a sad, sad situation overall. But what are your guys' thoughts on that? Like, should the should the yearbook company have done that? Should they have made them do a, a update or a makeup day? Should there be like tighter things on dress code before they go in? I don't. I just thought it was interesting that um, that this article came up. What was it? The yearbook company that did the editing on yep, their own? Yeah. Yeah, they just took it up. Well, in partnership with the school, they said, here's 80 photos. Okay, so the school, so, under the direction of the school. Right, right. So they're just doing what the client asked them to do at this point. So yeah, that's the, a good the point. The school yeah. is where I would point the finger at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, <sighs> this See, is, this well, is, is a hot topic. The, Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, the, the examples that um, you have of, of that one girl, she didn't show any more skin than anybody – when I was that age, showed, right. you know, showed. I, I didn't see anything wrong. I know I wasn't trying to be a pervy old man. <laughs> I didn't see any anything wrong. I mean, like I said, it was no different than what girls my age when I was that age wore. And um, I think it's it's once again a school system or a school in particular being um, – Influenced a little too hard by by those that uh, like to try to cancel others out. 
Yeah. And, you know, if the, the school didn't, like, they came into school wearing these clothes, if mm-hmm. it was against the dress code, they should have dealt with it when you walk in the door, right? Instead yeah, of bingo. making it a non-issue. Yes. I mean, if there's a problem, the problem exists before the picture's taken. Exactly. Yeah. So don't take the yeah. pictures if there's a dress code issue. But no one says anything, yeah. then someone who's... You know, yearbook editor, whoever makes an arbitrary decision. Um, you know, it, it's easy for me to say as the father of a little girl, yeah, right? I'm in favor of paper bags for everybody, you know, for a girl, <laughs> you know, sure. but there, there's definitely uh, something about being comfortable in your own skin, and right, yeah, absolutely. As, as adolescent, I think all of us have had that awkward, like, you'd want to feel. Like everything's like you belong in your body, right? And as mm. middle school, high school, or things are happening, right? So things are changing. It's easy to yeah. already be very, very self conscious about the way you look. Yeah. And then you have an outside source editing, like making changes to your appearance. It, I can see how that could be very de- detrimental. You know? Yeah. Uh, one of the, the daughters, to get this uh, right, says, her daughter was hospitalized twice this this year due to stress and pressure from this last year, and now it's including the body imaging, the body image issues yeah. um, that she's still seeking treatment for. So, I mean, this goes deep, and I think also for me growing up, it was like just suck it up, Buttercup, like deal with it. But the more I learn about trauma and I learn about uh, you know adolescence and growing up and stuff, like there's so much of a better way uh, than just telling people just to suck it up. Like we really have to deal with that. And, and I think part of it is you see like on the Twitter account, uh, Karens, um, like some of these middle aged women are just losing their ever loving mind. And I think part and partial because of mental health that we're not addressing. And I think some of that could stem back to not dealing with some of the issues in their childhood. And, and I'm not saying that's the case for, for all the mean, uh, you know, mid middle-aged women, but <laughs> it could be. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I looked at, uh, I agree with Ryan in the fact that you look at these girls and there's nothing wrong with what they're wearing. Um, but man, like you're right. Brian, that they should have addressed it at the door uh, or has said, hey, look, these pictures are out of dress code. We're going to give you a makeup day so that you could choose something else uh, to, to wear appropriately. And also, I think it's funny. They they list all the different uh, criteria for, for the boys versus the girls of what you can and can't wear. Mm-hmm. And the things for the girls are twice as long as <laughs> as the things for guys like. So there's a definite double standard on that on that one. There's no restriction from a guy wearing a short skirt, right? Uh, here's the rules for the, for the boys. There's three it, rules. Does it say you can't wear a short skirt? I'm just, just curious. It does not. Okay. Well, it says boys pants slacks must be worn to the waist. No boxer shorts or underwear may be visible. Check. Uh, mustaches and beards <laughs> shall be neatly trimmed. Okay. And revealing clothing and pajamas are not acceptable. So there's, there's the three rules for guys. Anything else you're on, uh, for girls, tops and shirts must cover the entire shoulder. Uh, they must be modest and not revealing or distracting. Midriff or cutoff dresses or cutout tops may not be worn. Extremely short skirts are not to be worn. Skirts are no shorter than four inches above the top of the knee. Revealing clothing, pajamas, and lingerie is not acceptable. Uh, hair curlers and, ex- and excessive makeup is not permitted. Girls' pants slacks must be worn to the waist. No underwear may be exposed. So even in that, like wh- the girls are way more than guys. They also don't mention, though, the, um, the girls mustaches and beard shall be neatly trimmed. So that's true. Yeah. If we're going to play equals, right. Just copy and paste the same. Yeah. And they're very kind of vague on some of the terminology too. Like, right. You know, with the, what, what is distracting and that's going to be probably different based on the, the person, right. Right. (laughs) Based on your physical (laughs) look. Right. So like what, it's all, you know, circumstantial or uh, su- yeah, subjective. Such a, it just frustrates uh, me, uh, you know, the, of the, the double standard on that or just the not equalness. Yeah, yeah, sure. And there's a thing, you know, there's I think there's a bigger uh, thing here. I can't, I just lost my word. <laughs> Issue? Uh, you, know, we've, you know, we've kind of over sexualized the female body mm-hmm. so that Absolutely. anything that looks 
form fitting is yeah. automatically Acceptable. labeled a certain way, right? Mm. Okay. And that's that's on society, I think, you know. But I think I, that, so Yeah. That's, I mean, when we were coming up, you know, we were basically taught to respect girls and respect women. Mm-hmm. And it it seems that nowadays boys don't have really have that. I mean, there's boys that do mm. have that, yeah. But then there's boys out there that that don't have that being taught to them to where they they should respect the women in their lives and the girls, you know, the friends and and stuff like that. Yeah. And I and I think that's the big difference. It, it, because the what they have as the regulations for a dress code really doesn't sound that different from when we were in school. Mm-hmm. Um. And, and in, like I said, the picture that, that was in that article, the girl didn't look any different than in a girl that was, you know, my age back then would have worn. It, what's changed is society. Is what's changed is everything being hypersexualized and, you know, boys not being taught to be respectful towards girls and then girls being scapegoated mm-hmm. saying, you know, you have to dress a certain way to keep the boys from misbehaving. No, <laughs> they don't need to. The boys just yeah. need to not... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's you know, if, a, if a young lady's dressed a certain way, it's, it's not an invitation for a guy to, you know, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, to, you know, approach or whatever. Yeah, no excuses. All right, so anything else on that topic? I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to know your opinions and also voice mine. That was good. All right, here's something that that also that burns my biscuits. I want to know your all thoughts on this. There is now a tax on plastic shopping bags that starts uh, January 1st in Roanoke of next year. Uh, the Roanoke has been become the first local government in Virginia to adopt an ordinance taxing disposable plastic shopping bags. Uh, again, the measure takes effect January 1st at grocery convenience and drug stores. They will tax them at a nickel apiece for each plastic bag that is used. Uh, They say that they, Roanoke has already been recognized as an environmentally conscious uh, for its use of propane and electric vehicles and become the first locality to target single use bags made from chemicals on Monday. Uh, So they are going to tax uh, anything that you could put groceries in, uh, big box stores like Walmart, uh, Target, if you can buy non-perishables, I think that they're out. Um, but they are going to try to clean up the environment by taxing plastic bags. Um, anything though, that is like, you know, like the kind of bags that you rip off to put in vegetables or, uh, mm. meat or ice cream or anything like, like, like those aren't taxed, but it's the shopping ones. That it's you shopping take out. bags. Yeah. They're wanting more people to bring in their own bags and use those. Okay. Versus using the plastic bags that the stores give you at five cents a pop. That that's interesting because that I would expect that to come out of some place like California, not some city <laughs> in the know. middle Roanoke, of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, yeah. Have you been to Roanoke? I have not. Saying, it's uh, you know, that whole that whole place just disappeared. There's a lot of flat on so I'm say. That. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, so five cents a pop for that's any grocery. That's interesting, you know. So I, we do our grocery shopping and most of it at Harris Teeter, mm-hmm. and you know we do the home shop thing where they bring out the car and it's mm-hmm. we get paper bags every time. It's like almost oh. very rarely do we even get a plastic bag anymore. Hmm. Wow, I, that's you interesting. Know, it reminds me like that. You know, in the eighties, it was all paper. Like right. you go to you go to the food <laughs> line and they use you know, paper bags. Period. And at yeah. some point, I guess maybe it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, maybe, you know. Yeah, but you know everything went to plastic, and that was the norm. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. it's like, well, maybe that was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we go to Walmart and we get the grocery pickup as well, mm-hmm. but they'll put like a stick of gum in one bag, and then they'll put like uh, a gallon of milk in another, and it's never consistent and it's never full. So how do you argue that? Like if you don't do your own groceries, and somebody else bags it, are they popping a nickel every time that they oh. put that in there? People don't know how to bag groceries either. Absolutely, like, that's an old man rant right there. But, and then, what about this? What if you return the bag? Do you get the five cents back? Mm, See, like there's none of that kind of thing. Yeah, like it, it doesn't make sense. They weren't. They weren't. I don't, the city says, "Oh, we don't know how much money we're going to make from this, or how much people but are going to make." They're from just this. trying to discourage. 
It's like when you go into a convenience store in the middle of nowhere and it's an extra quarter to run a credit card on, you know, to get a can yeah. of Coke. Mm-hmm. It's it's but, all about, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do something else. It's, right. And that's what they say. They, they're very clear. Like, this is about changing behavior. Yeah. But the deal is, is like, why don't you let the free market decide? So Aldi's, they don't have any bags at all. Like, you have to either bring your own bag or I think they actually do charge for, for bags if they want to use them. Or they give you, like, the boxes that the food comes in yeah. uh, from the store to let you box that up and take that with you for no Let's cost. Do the Sam's Club model. There's no nothing. They just, you know, okay. roll it or out Sam's in a Club. cart and just dump <laughs> right. it all in the back. Your trunk just rolls around. <laughs> but let the free market decide. Like, why don't you have more of those stores that have that? So if people don't want to use the shopping bags, they can go to places like Aldi's or whatnot. Or why don't you like do like a percentage off of your bill that if you bring your own, like, why are we punishing using the plastic bags instead of rewarding they, doing the good bags? I think Trader, didn't Trader Joe's do something if you bring your own bag? There was some like. Yeah, like you get it, you get entered into a drawing that wins like that, a, okay. a you get, There's some like incentive. That. You get some yeah. extra right. two buck chuck or whatever. Right. Right. So why, why are we, why is the automatic to be punishing people? Versus giving them rewards for doing doing something good. Get a cookie if you use the paper bag. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> like you get a little cookie or don't get your name put in for a five million dollar. You know what's the a one million dollar class a million? million. Yeah. Class a million <laughs> bag a million. <laughs> but I mean, it it just frustrates me. Like, why are we taxing more on top of that? It just yeah. oh, it drives me nuts. Because that's the big government way. Yeah, yeah. Evidently, I'm just y'all. Well, this is an example of small government, I suppose. You know, <laughs> they're <laughs> doing what they want in their municipality, yeah. not being told by you know the president that you have to tax. Yeah. You know. Well, the free market will decide if people leave Roanoke. I guess. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, don't move to Roanoke is what I'm telling you. Unless you want to pay five cents per bag. I mean, it's pretty. So, I mean, that could, that could add up after a year. All right. Here's the last uh, Here's the last story that I have for us is a pastor evidently likes healing people. Uh, a South African pastor, Christ, I mean, already he calls himself Christ. Christ Penelope. Here we go. And we're trying to keep it PG-13. Uh, they, he... <laughs> He farts on his congregants, claiming that it's a process to heal people. (laughs) I'm sorry, what? Yeah, let me read that back. South African pastor Christ Penelope farts on congregants, (laughs) claiming that it's a process to heal people. Uh, A South African pastor. (laughs) Whoa, back from the mic, chief. Uh, a South African pastor reportedly farts in people's faces as a healing process to cure all spiritual and physical problems. Pastor Christ Penelope of Sevenfold Holy Spirit Ministries uh, of South Africa has created a buzz online for his unorthodox method of healing people after a photo of him sitting on the heads of people apparently farting on them went viral. Uh, an attendee visiting the church complained, when we come to church because we need prayers, not to be farted on. However, uh, Pastor Penelope has defended his method, insisting that he is simply de- 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 demonstrating the power of God. Is the spirit <laughs> dwelling within him? He says that uh, it started with Master Jesus when he stepped on Peter. And it is demonstrated in God's power, just like God made Adam go to sleep. It's a similar thing. God did anything with the body of Adam while he was in the ground in deep sleep, but he was not feeling anything. The Bible doesn't say anything about Adam saying, God, you are hurting me. According to the pastor, farting near the person's nostrils is important so that the quote unquote healing power can enter the body to do his work. He said when they wake up from their deep sleep, they will tell you that they didn't feel anything, and it is showing the power of God, and those who need healing are healed afterwards. Okay. Um, okay. All right. I'll let you I, go ahead and go. I have so many questions right so now. Many. So many. So many. So many. Also, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'll, I'll uh, wait. <laughs> also, keep in mind that there are surprisingly many people wait up to two months 
to meet him to get farted on, even collecting his farts in containers. Uh, there are other ones that do not agree with this. Um, so uh, he, he rebuttals saying, I don't fart on people. I heal people. Justin and Daniel, if you're listening to this, oh, don't get any ideas. <laughs> uh, okay, so All right, here you we said go. people are like waiting. So is this a waiting. large congregation? It, I don't know. Is I, there I a limit? Think like, so. is there a t- time window? Like, I would say probably. He it, only I mean, he <laughs> only heals people after Mexican two hours after lunch, mm-hmm. right. and he has to have how many bean burritos before that? Yeah. Like, what? This is, seems like a lot of physical preparation. That's a good point, right? Like, well, I, uh, I maybe his IBS. Uh, he, maybe he's, he's, naturally. He's, he's anointed and intolerant. All right, was yeah, and then he's just letting he's just, just, just drinking the goat's aim, milk. He's yeah. in South Africa or somewhere. He said, "Right, right. <laughs> y'all." All right, let, raise the hands of of how many people would would uh, get on the ground to let him fart on your face. So, so are they passing out? Is the other thing he said. People when they wake up, like right. these are some monster <laughs> farts, right? Yo, I'm not saying that I've I've let some rip that would drive me out of the shower. Um, but I, I never had one bad enough that I'd knock myself out. Like CO2, like oxygen, oxygen <laughs> deprivation situation here. There's so much it's like a, methane in your face. You're just like in your face. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Y'all. No one light a candle in there. Right. <laughs> so I thought that was, um, quite interesting. Y'all quite interesting. That's something. Wow. So, all right. Well, that's all I got. <laughs> uh, Benny Hinn has time, nothing man. on him. Right. Uh, no doubt. Priest, that, did you have any wacky news or was yeah, that? Yeah, I got some uh, news for us. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's uh, roll. Yeah. Wacky news brought to you by Watchman Cigars. And I lost my window. Here we go. Uh, we already talked about cicadas. So, um,. Sioux City, Iowa. An Iowa man was arrested on Sunday for allegedly setting his neighbor's house on fire. Well done, sir. Because he didn't mow his lawn. (laughs) Wow. Why didn't he light the lawn on fire? According to the Sioux (laughs) City Police Department, um, officers responded to a house fire. The fire department (laughs) had extinguished a blaze, uh, which damaged the residence. Uh, the neighbor admittedly was upset at his neighbor after he asked him on the previous day to mow his lawn. <laughs> when his neighbor hadn't cut his grass on Sunday, he allegedly attempted to set their house on fire. This is all allegedly what he obviously right. they, they know he did it. Um, so they, the fire department determined it had been intentionally set after they discovered pieces of plywood and sticks that were stacked against the house <laughs> and they could smell gas in the area. Uh huh. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that that escalated very quickly of, will you please mow your yard to, I'm going to set your house on fire. Yeah, and, uh, they, and they got him on like the, sc- the ring camera or whatever, doorbell sure. security camera. Yeah, you can't do nothing anymore with that because that ring camera is going to pick you the up. The man was inquiring about when they would mow their lawn and attempted to remove a registration sticker off a car in the driveway. <laughs> Guy's got some issues here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. At least he's not farting on people's faces. Uh, did you guys see the video? Uh, there's there's uh, a man who saved his wife from a bobcat. Yes, in Kentucky. Was that Kentucky? It was. Yeah. This well, this one says Burgall, North Carolina. So maybe it's oh, a different. No, one. I'm sorry. You're right. It was it was North Carolina. Um, I knew it was where I lived. Sometime. It's a viral point. video captured a rabid bod, bobcat being hurled across a lawn <laughs> by a man after the feline attacked his wife. Do you have the audio on that? Because I think there's a cuss oh. word on there, but I don't. I didn't see your audio. Out. I watched the video, and it's just like you can't tell what's happening. And then there's like a tussle, and right. then there's a flying bobcat <laughs> going across. The bobcat is like I just got attacked by a bobcat. That's I mean, that's scary, right? Yeah, dude, that thing looked fierce, and it okay, was going, so going back to last week. Mm-hmm. Would you fight a bobcat? Well, clearly you can. You just pick them up and throw them really far. Just throw them, right? Right. Yeah, easy. No problem. Easy peasy. No problem. Yeah. 
Oh, um, let's see here. Oh, a man has been jailed for robbing a McDonald's in England. Okay. And not making off, uh, not only with cash, but also food. But okay. Unfortunately for him, not only did he get caught, but he also wasn't able to get the meal he was hoping for <laughs> during the robbery. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, according to the news, uh, he, he had walked into a McDonald's, claimed to have a gun, and demanded money from the register and forced access to the safe. On his way mm-hmm. out, he reportedly demanded some chicken nuggets. <laughs> And they're quoted as the fast food franchise's famous chicken nuggets. Is that what McDonald's is famous for? (laughs) But unfortunately, it was too early in the day, and they were still serving breakfast. Chicken nugget machine was broken. So he was was unable – he was unwilling to wait for them to cook the nuggets. So he made off with a double sausage McMuffin instead. Thank God he wasn't trying to get the ice cream. I, I mean, I love me a sausage McMuffin, sausage egg McMuffin. Mm. I prefer the, uh, the the pancake one with uh, oh, the McGriddle. Maple, McGriddle. I like those. Better. I like the egg on the McMuffin, like the way they do that. Mm. Yeah. It is Weird cool. microwave egg. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, McDonald's, there's, a, I guess, a famous, it was in uh, the Big Daddy where he goes into it was Adam Sandler. Oh, they go into McDonald's and it's yeah. like ten thirty or <laughs> stop serving to get breakfast. breakfast. They're like, we're yeah. done serving breakfast, sir. And, <laughs> and he has a fit in the middle of the restaurant. Right. Yeah. Then a few years later, McDonald's goes to all day breakfast. Right. Right. Which, okay. You know, some restaurants have done. Like Bojangles <laughs> always had that, but they don't have all day Big Macs and chicken nuggets. Apparently, they may now just all day. Bre- yeah. Right. Raise Someone's of hands. Shot. Raise of hands if you think that there was alcohol involved in that man. <laughs> There's something involved. Yeah. Oh, okay. let's see. I got it. I got to do. Uh, uh, do you remember uh, Carol Baskin? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, there's a movie I think it just came out called Army of the Dead. Mm-hmm. Have you seen anything about it? It's a zombie. I've seen it on Netflix. I have, have not clicked it? play yet, and nor well, will I. Apparently, there is a zombie tiger in the movie. Okay. And. Uh, mm. So Zack Snyder is the director, and he That's and his, or his VFX team, not him specifically, uh, went looked to get research on the movements of tigers mm-hmm. so they could properly animate this mm-hmm. virtual zombie tiger. Okay, so just uh, to be clear, there's not real zombie tigers. It doesn't say there is, but maybe okay. if they get the same fungus, fungus from the says, cicadas, yeah. their yeah. limbs fall off. Eat the zombie cicada. Oh, oh crap! What if the yeah. snakes ate the zombies? It's for cicadas. The zombie then snakes. We zombie snakes. Then your eagles yeah. eat this copper. Your cats eat the copper head, and then the eagles eat the. That's how yeah. the rapture happens. Yeah, that's, that's how Jesus right there. is coming back. Uh, anyway, they Sorry. found a. They went to a tiger or big cat rescue. Mm, the big, the big, cat big cat rescue. Okay. The big rat cat rescue to get. Uh, inspiration or to mm-hmm. observe, you know, and what's funny is this actually took place before Tiger King came out. Okay. So they didn't know that they were putting themselves in danger. <laughs> right. Cause Carol Bass is crazy. Anyway. Uh, right. No, anyway. yeah, no I, I'm with you, <laughs> but they, you know, they went and did this and then like, they all ended up watching Tiger King. They're like, Oh, I know that. Like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. so I, I just thought that was interesting. So that was it. What would be <laughs> scarier? Funny. What would be scarier, the zombie uh, tiger or a zombie Carol Baskins? Oh man, I mean the live Carol Baskins pretty scary. So right. So yeah, the say, what's the difference be... between the two as far as <laughs> if she's alive or dead? Long pointy teeth. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So no. that's it for me. That's it for you. All right. Yeah. If well, anyone guys, has. Uh, News they find, you know, like zombie cicadas or anything interesting like that. Shoot it over to the old headlines at sfpradio.com. And there you go. I'm always looking for more stories. I even, I'm thinking about if I can find enough stories to bring back the old podcast. So, Ooh, teaser. Thinking about it. I would love it. I enjoyed yeah. those a lot. Those are great. I need to, I haven't even looked at the numbers, see if I have any following left. 
<laughs> we don't have any following left, so there's that. You're in good company if you don't. Um, all right, so that's going to be this week's show. Uh, again, next week, David Page, the author of Food Americana and the creator of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. We're really excited to have him on. Again, it's not Guy Fieri, so just, you know, cool your, cool your boots. But, uh, but the creator of the show, he's going to be on next week. We're going to talk about Southern food, fried chicken, anything you want, uh, he's going to be on the show. So I'm really excited to have him on. It'll be a great guest. So, um, again, thank you for tuning in to the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. Hit subscribe. Uh, don't forget that. And then, uh, you know, rate, review, all those things on the podcast. We would really appreciate it. That helps our numbers go up. Our numbers go up. We get better guests. Uh, now that these guests are bad, but we can get some more celebrity-type guests. We would appreciate that. And uh, we might be able to do this full-time one day. So we would would love that. So again, thanks for tuning in. This is the Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. And as always, keep looking up.